Um, thank you. Um, good afternoon. My name is Anne-Marie O'Donnell, and if the lead up to this wasn't nerve-wracking for me, it is now, so um, bear with me. This is my first time speaking, so um, I'm here to talk to you today about understanding the security risks of social media. Um, so a bit about me. Uh, I'm a cybersecurity consultant. I work for BH Consulting, a cybersecurity consultancy in Dublin. I've been working for them for four years now, and um, I graduated from Letterkenny IT with a cybersecurity degree, and I've also uh, graduated with a master's degree from TU Dublin. Um, when I'm not doing my day job with BH Consulting, I like to volunteer my expertise with the Zero Day CTF, who are actually running the CTF here today. Uh, I also do some part-time lecturing, and I'm a mother to three amazing kids. Now, I say kids, um, that's kind of an exaggeration because two of them are now grown adults who are immigrating to Australia and leaving me behind. Um, but like I said, today is my first time ever talking at a conference, and um, I'd just like to say thank you to Besides Belfast for giving me this opportunity. Uh, it kind of feels like I've come full circle because this was the very first conference, security conference I ever attended as a cybersecurity student. And um, I attended every one that they've had except for when they had the break for COVID. And so coming back here today to speak, it's kind of like coming full circle. So, um, yeah, so you're probably wondering what has inspired me today to talk about social media. Um, and what, why I'm talking about the risks of social media. So most people nowadays have a social media presence. Out of curiosity, is there anyone in this room who has never had a social media account? Or are we all social media addicts in here? Anyone? No? We all use it? Okay, so when we think about social media, we think about the nice sides of it. When I was a... Um, uh, about 2010, I was a stay-at-home mother with my daughter. Um, she was a baby, so for five years I was stuck at home, living in a, outside a small village in Donegal. So my closest neighbours were basically a field full of cows. So I had no one to speak to. So social media was great. You know, I could connect with people globally and I could share everything. You know, whatever was happening every day, I shared it. I was just addicted to it. It wasn't until I became a cybersecurity student that I started to realize the more active I was on social media, the more risk I was exposing myself to. So what kind of risks are those? We've got like potential cyberbullying. We've got that feeling of fear of missing out when we're looking at other people's social media and we're seeing what they're doing and we start comparing ourselves to it. We've also got the argument that uh, we can start to feel more isolated and uh, anxious potentially. And then not to mention we also have the other types of um, issues such as phishing scams and those horrible things we hear about the romance scams that happen on, on social media. So those are the potential risks as individuals using social media we might face. But what about businesses? In an age where businesses are increasingly reliant on social media for marketing and recruiting and interacting with their customer base, basically, it's imperative that we start to comprehend the many types of security risks that could be lurking for them in the shadows of the platforms. Uh, so you might ask, how did this become a topic of interest for me? Well, recently I found that I've had quite a few of my clients coming to me looking for security reviews of their social media accounts. Uh, one client in particular suffered quite uh, suffered some reputational damage due to uh, following some accounts that didn't quite fit with their company's uh, values, we'll say. So, hacking of social media. 64% uh, of businesses have experienced social media hacking and fraud. At least, there are at least 30 attempts to take over corporate social media accounts per year per institution. And it's $3.25 billion in annual global revenue lost each year due to cybercrimes relating to social media. So this isn't a new concept. 
and has gone on for many years. And the motives of these hackers is usually to gain control over accounts, um, to steal personal information, spread misinformation, or engage in other malicious activities such as data theft or identity theft or just spreading malware and, as I said, scams. Um, it can be financially motivated or politically motivated, but sometimes we just have to accept the fact that it's malicious because they can be. So here's some examples of companies that had their social media hacked. So in the last 10 years, we're going to look at three of them. Um, July 2022, Disneyland Resorts. So they had their Instagram hacked. Uh, they have a global following of 8.4 million. They lost access to their Instagram accounts. Uh, posts were made that were racist, uh, homophobic, and there were even comments of uh, threat of a new COVID strain. Now, in 2022, that was a big thing because we were just basically coming out of COVID and we were reopening, and the thought of a threat like that would be damaging to any, any business. Um, so the damage was done. They actually... Uh, you know, um, took control of their account again, deleted the posts, everything, but the damage was done. Um, the hacker that actually took responsibility for the hack admitted that it was actually a revenge attack because he felt that the Disney staff were mocking him. So there was nothing there that was actually financially related. It was just someone wanting to get revenge because they felt the staff was mocking them. In 2014, though, this one was interesting. It was the House of Wolf pub in Islington in London. Now, this was a small pub, had their Twitter account hijacked and Facebook account hijacked. But this one was a disgruntled employee. Um, they had fired an employee and forgotten that this employee had access to their social media accounts. They didn't change the passwords. And this employee believed that they were owed money, so they hijacked the accounts, took control of them, basically aired the dirty, dirt, their dirty laundry all over their social media, and refused to give back the accounts until they were paid. Now, this, uh, again, is just an example that, you know, it's not always someone from outside that's doing it. There are such things as insider threats. And then in 2013, this one was my favorite, <laughs> um, this is Burger King had their Twitter account hacked and the hackers took control of the account and proceeded to uh, post a series of unauthorized tweets which included um, offensive and inappropriate material. Uh, it also alluded to the fact that Burger King had been taken over by McDonald's and um, it basically um, it went on for a few hours. There was a lot of offensive language and imagery. But... Um, they shut down the Twitter account, but the interesting fact on this one was that in the time that they were hacked, there was so much social media news about it and just general news that they gained 30,000 new followers during that hack. So um, this was actually analyzed by an advertising company and it came out with the, the line, positive or not, you know? So um, although, you know, no one wants to see their... their um, their social media hacked, this one went in Burger King's favor. So um, these attacks are basically highlighting the potential reputational damage that can occur when a brand's official account is compromised and the need for businesses to have um, a plan in place for responding to social media crisis and handling public relations when you're in the middle of a crisis. So how do we go about doing this? Well, the very first thing that any business should do when using social media, uh, the first place they should start is with a very strong social media policy. And we must and always ensure that all of our staff are on board with this social media policy, regardless of whether they're actively posting for the business or whether they're posting for themselves. They need to... Um, they need to be on board with the policy because regardless of what we think, social media has the power to influence both positively and negatively on a company. So this is crucial for any business and in the current digital age, it helps establish guidelines and expectations for employees, behavior and interactions um, on these social media platforms. 
So what's the first thing that we need to look at in our social media policy? The first thing is we need to identify and name who is responsible for our social media and who is responsible for our social media team. Uh, we need to, basically, these people are going to be, this people, I say person or um, unit, whatever it is, they need to be responsible for ensuring that they've set up the social media accounts. So one unit is setting up all the social media accounts and that they're being set up with one particular generic email because there's no point in me, uh, an employee at BH Consulting, setting up our uh, social media accounts with my personal email attached to it and then tomorrow I leave and my email gets shut down. So how do we control our accounts then? Because these accounts are all linked to me. So it needs to be a generic uh, email account belonging to the business that anyone within that unit can actually access when they leave. When, when that person leaves. Uh, they also need to be responsible for everything relating to those platforms. So uh, deciding who's going to have access to those platforms, uh, regularly reviewing security settings on these social media platforms, because as we know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, they all go in the back, they all change things on their, on their platforms, and we're unaware that they've done that. And then we don't find out until later on when we're looking around saying, oops, I wasn't secure here or I wasn't secure there and then we have to readjust things. So constant monitoring of your social media platform is imperative. Uh, deciding how the social media platform will be used to promote your brand is a very important. This needs to be considered and who will be posting on your social media and how often you're going to so uh, post on your social media and, the, and does your content need to be approved? Um, Monitoring your social media, looking for, oh, sorry, uh, monitoring your social media and uh, looking for um, other accounts that might be set up. Uh, so brand impersonation, that's another important thing. Uh, and then also having um, a, a, a procedure in place for decommissioning accounts that aren't being used because these are all very important things and um, this is something that one of my clients actually discovered when they were when we were reviewing them was that their social uh, media policy was not strong enough. They were using a large team of um, of social media people. Uh, they were using one login and sharing it amongst each other and sharing the password uh, without any sort of secure sharing. And um, they basically found themselves in a position where it was impossible to track and audit things. And then they got into trouble and we couldn't identify who it was. Uh, the next step is if you're going to use social management tools. Now, social management tool, media management tools are a wonderful thing. They can manage all your social media accounts at once and you can basically set things up so that, um, that that your posts are going out whenever you want. Uh, you can control your social media accounts from it. Uh, your social, the next thing is join us, move us, leave us policy. This needs to be brought into your social media policy because we need to be able to control when someone joins your company and they need to access social media, then they need it straight away. So we need to access that and set that up straight away. If they're moving from that unit, from the social media team, then we need to identify that straight away and move them out. Or if they're leaving, like the house of a wolf pub, we need to shut them down and change passwords and remove their access. And we also need to look at formalizing a training for your social media team. This is also very important as your team needs to be able to acknowledge and and understand your social media policy and work within the confines of your social media policy as well as, um, as showing that they understand what they're doing. And then we also need to include procedures for how to close down your old accounts and uh, decommission your accounts. When it comes to formal training programs in relation to your social media accounts, 
it is important that all of your, your members have signed your social media policy and acknowledged it. The best way to ensure that we are doing our training for this is to ensure that we have some form of um, acceptable usage of the business social media accounts. So we need to identify with them that this is how you'll be using the accounts, um, what is appropriate to post on these accounts, how are we going to guidelines for uh, how we're going to access the accounts. Will we be accessing the accounts via um, office machines or office-based uh, mobile phones? Will we be allowing um, access to uh, social media only within business hours? Or will we be allowing them to post outside of business hours? Um, training relating specifically to social media security issues as well. We have to think about the potential for phishing uh, through social media accounts. We also need to think of malware or use of vulnerable third-party apps without our social media. And guidance on responsible posting and interacting uh, with your follow followers online. Um, we need to be very wary of the types of um, we need to be very wary of the types of individuals and businesses that we are connecting with on social media platforms. Um, we need to review the connections because not everyone that we follow will have the same values as us or the business. Um, a perfect example of this would have been um, a client who had followed. Uh, an account that was anti-trans and this created quite a, a, an issue for them. When they realized what had happened, they tried to unfollow them and this then created quite a backlash. Uh, they had to shut down their social media accounts and essentially they relied on their social media. This was how they interacted, this was how they got their posts out, this was how um, they, they brought people into their business and unfortunately they had to close down their, their social media because um, essentially it was uh, creating quite, repu uh, it was, cre it was ruined, it, there was reputational damage and it was becoming um, a process that needed to be dealt with and this was where we came into it. Social media management tools. Um, now, this is a very good one because um, a lot of social media management tools come with free licenses, and this one in particular was being used. Um, sorry, this one in particular was being used again. Uh, it was a free version with only one login, and everyone was using it. So again, it was impossible to actually track. So. The most important thing when you choose to use a social media management tool is to ensure that it's licensed correctly, that there's a service level agreement, and that everyone who is using that tool has their own login so that uh, they can, their posts and uh, logins can be audited and tracked. So logins and posts being regularly, regularly audited is the next most important step that should be done. Uh, it's important to identify that you know um, and recognize the, the logins and the IP addresses and locations of where those tools are being logged in from and that they belong to your staff. Um, if using social media platforms for posting, have you appropriately secured your social media accounts? That's something else you don't think of because although you're accessing all your social media accounts through a platform, you're forgetting that your, uh, your actual social media accounts are still sitting out there and they're not, they might not be being used by you per se, uh, by the, you might not be accessing them yourself, but they're still sitting there and they're still open to being attacked. So this is another important thing that you should have them appropriately secured and using MFA, and if that's unavailable, you should be accessing them with an authenticator app. And are these social media platforms being regularly checked and passwords changed at regular and appropriate intervals? Old accounts, so... When we're talking about decommissioning old accounts, follow uh, proper 
The main thing I can say to you is you need to follow proper procedures to disable these accounts because these accounts can be taken over and used by hackers to try and represent themselves as uh, genuine accounts for your set to fool your followers. So it's important that you don't leave accounts sitting there being unused. If you cease using an account, uh, then go through the proper procedures to disable those accounts officially. Um, yeah. So what are my key takeaways from this actual talk today? So first of all, my main one to you is that a strong social media policy is necessary for any company. Uh, without that, then your, your employees don't have actual guidelines to follow in how you want them to use your social media accounts. Next is to keep track of, the, of, who, of your social media accounts and who is accessing your social media accounts. So again, it's bringing in your join as move as leave as policy. It's um, ensuring that only those that need access have access. Uh, implementing a formalized staff security training program for social media. This is incredibly important because although we all use social media, um, we all use it in a different way. So we need to acknowledge that the way I would post on social media as myself personally would be completely different to the way a business would expect you to be posting on social media. So having a formalized training program where you're telling your staff, this is what we do and this is how we do it, is the best way for going forward and ensuring that your staff don't actually uh, do things that will reflect badly on your co on your company. I also recommend um, having a uh, crisis management playbook in play so that in the event that there is a breach, your staff actually know how to proceed um, and what to do in the event of a particular type of crisis. And tabletop exercises are another great way of training your staff because there's nothing better than sitting down and throwing a real life scenario around the table and then putting the pressure on them with some time and saying, this is what's happening. This is where we're at. What do we do now? How do we deal with this? And the best way you can come from that is basically at the end of that, not only have you worked your way through a scenario, a real life scenario, but you're able to turn around and say, okay, I think this may have worked or this might not have worked, but maybe we should look at this next time. Um, and continuously monitoring your social media accounts for potential threats. This is also very important. We can't just assume that because we've secured our accounts with a password and we've got MFA on there, that there isn't the potential for someone to get through. Um, this is very important. So continual monitoring of your social media accounts. Just don't let them sit there. And finally, multi-factor authentication. That is another major um, uh, important thing for all your social media accounts. Don't leave them sitting there with just a password. Always have multi-factor authentication. I can only tell you that there's not a day goes by where I don't get a text message or an email from Microsoft telling me that someone's trying to access my Hotmail account. I am changing my password every few days and it doesn't take long before I start getting these little codes through telling me that someone's requested a code. So um, it's very important to have those alerts on so that you can identify this. And I know that I've spoken about this from a business perspective today, but it is very important to understand that this, what I'm saying here today, doesn't just apply to businesses. Of course, I'm not telling everyone here you need to go home and create a social media policy for yourself, uh, but we do have values and ideas of what we consider is safe to share. Uh, what we consider, how we want to use these platforms, how much information we're willing to give away about ourselves. These are all things that we need to consider every day um, because, yeah, the amount of information that can be gathered about us from social media is, uh, it's, it's infinite. So, you know, a hacker just has to find out one little thing about me from LinkedIn and they could figure out my 
my employer, my, my work email even, you know, because they identify where I work, they can figure out how my work email looks, or they might figure out where I live, or they might, from a photo of my kids, figure out what school they go to. So these are all things we need to think about and keep in mind. And as I said, although this was mainly targeting businesses, um, this can all be applied to you personally as well. Um, thank you.